Phoenix Shadow. So we've been playing some Detectives Phoenix in Hollow One, liking it a lot. A lot of people have been wanting me to play Detectives Phoenix with Death Shadow, and I do think there's some interesting overlap between basically all of your Detectives Phoenix lists wanting to play. Oh, sorry, this is not supposed to be Flare of Malice. This is supposed to be the uh, two damage Black MDFC. Um, there's some tension between, uh, or sorry, there's some synergy between wanting to play Street Wraith with Shadow, wanting to play Street Wraith with Detectives Phoenix, wanting to play Sh Phoenix with Shadow, and also NT with Shadow has been pretty good in the past, giving it Trample. Um, is that also of Malice? Didn't actually get around to testing this one last night, but I ended up at, built, it, built it and then wanted to add the... Uh, The, some of the black MDFCs to have it like higher mana value overall. Then also like, I was thinking about playing like a godless trend to splash black. So then decide or splash white. And I'm not really wanting to splash white for anything and end up pulling some of those cards out. Sorry, I just gonna put the four, the four mana destroy target creature of planeswalker. I think over the Boggart bog bogger might be better because of flage, but the higher mana value for the collect evidence is kind of like why we're playing it in the first place. And I don't mind the extra removal. Fell the Profane. Yeah, sorry. Fell, that's the card I'm looking for right now is Fell the Profane. I couldn't remember the name of it, but should be here. Okay. Sorry about that. There's a list with a few 5-0s of Phoenix and Shadow. Was it similar to this? Because I feel like a lot of the shell is pretty much the same. Um, but I guess it kind of depends on... Like, like, you kind of have to play Bobble, I think. Um, like, because, like, DRC Bobble is just so good in your Nethergoyf Phoenix deck. And Nether, Nethergoyf is, is really, really good. And, you, like, you really need to play Bobble in your Nethergoyf deck in the first place. And, like, DRC and Nethergoyf are so much better than Ragavan as your one-drops. And you don't, I think, really need the extra one-drops. I think you need to play Bowmasters. Bowmasters are so good at the moment. You need to play Inti as Discard Outlet for Phoenix. So I think most of the questions are honestly like, so like you have like these two flex spots on the fatal pushes, which I considered like cling to dust for flage, but you don't really want to play life gain in your, in your shadow deck that often. Um, gets to like one push, one inquisition. You maybe play a tar fire over seal fire. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, I think push is pretty good. Um, tar fire being a damage spell that grows with nether goyfs and DRCs is also pretty fine. All right. So sorry about that again. So I, I feel I feel pretty good about the deck, and it's kind of why I didn't really even test it last night. It's it's like I think these two pushes are kind of flex spots. I think there's some questions in the mana base, but for the most part, like for the most part, you're going to be 18 lands, and I think you want to play these. Like I, I think you want to play like these, <laughs> all of these spells with basically no wiggle room on any of them, and then you have like two flex spots, and then the sideboard's you know pretty standard first draft sideboard. Just Chandler is like a little bit narrow, I think. But thank you for sharing the list. Definitely close, of course. Also, three, Bowmasters is so good. I don't know. Not a big fan of Blood Moon at the moment in these kind of decks with only 18 lands. Not the biggest deal. So I'm trying to get the uh, Moxfield and Title up to date too. Okay, so we'll definitely keep the Street Wraith on top so we can use it to trigger the Inti next turn. Also, get Shadows bigger. All right, draw a card. So I'm going to go ahead and discard the Detectives Phoenix to the to the NT this turn. Not exactly expected. I mean, assuming we're not get snared. I don't know why I'm saying that out loud. Okay. <laughs> um. The next turn we might be able to shadow and put a Phoenix on the shadow. So we can't play that land this turn, but get to hit them for four. We have the Street Wraith. Even if they like untap and kill Inti, the Inti gets to be a two for one with the Wraith. A second basic island. 
Tide Shaper, so you can push that. Let's um, let's go ahead and I guess I guess we we could push that after we draw because we get to like we get to have more info after we draw. Um, on like how we want to surveil because we still can dig for whatever we want off the, the wraith and the inti. So let's go ahead and fatal push the tide shaper. Certainly going to graveyard an inti here. Then, then let's cycle the wraith. Hitting another copy of Channeler and an Arid Mesa. So the Channeler is going to be as big as the Shadow would be, just a 3-3. Three, three. So I think I should play this. And then is there is are, uh, now, uh, and I'll either play a Shadow or I'll escape the Phoenix, depending on if I can keep Delirium. So if I escape the Phoenix, I can remove... Yeah, I'll have to remove three types from the yard, and I have five types... I'll have to remove enchantment, creature, and then I guess another creature. And I, I, I would have three types in the yard, sorry. Which is just one, one, two, one, two, few. I guess I could discard Bowmaster to hand to the NT, but let's just go ahead and not do that. And be super ahead against Merfolk, putting them to 10 when they have you know, no creatures on board. Isn't Phoenix a number with Darcy? No, Darcy enables Phoenix. You get to fill up the yard for Phoenix. You get to surveil and dump Phoenix into the graveyard. There is some tension, but also, like, uh, Phoenix is an enchantment creature, so it's two types for DRC's Delirium. Just, like, I would say that they have more synergy than they have tension. Okay, I'm going to bring in two more Fatal Pushes. I'm going to cut, I think, Thoughtseize number four. Maybe Thoughtseize number number three. I think I want two. I think I want three Thoughtseizes on the draw. Could we trim an Inti? I think Inti's kind of bad to draw two copies of on the draw, so maybe we can trim one. Okay, I'm going to use the restroom real quick, be right back. What's up? It's me, your friend, Aspiring Spikes. What a classic, iconic shadow hand. Let's click the keep button. On the draw against Merfolk. What's up? It's me, your friend, Aspiring Spikes. We're gonna take some game actions here. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and I think cycle the wraith first. If I had drawn a fetch land, I would maybe want to bobble myself instead of bobbling them. Their top card is a relic of progenitus, pretty good against us. Thought seizing them. They have two Tide Shapers, which is really bad. I was hoping that if, I was kind of hoping they'd only have one and I could take it. What they don't have is land number two. I mean, their whole hand sucks, so, so I'm going to take the Tide Shaper. They're drawing Relic, so they're not finding land number two. I kind of wish I could take the Relic. I also kind of wish that I had drawn land number two by now, but we, I guess, have a, another chance. They play the Relic. If I draw a fetch land, it's kind of an interesting convo about what to do. Probably just play two Shadows. Basically a fetch land. A little bit worse because if they kick the Tide Shaper, then I don't have red mana anymore. But what I do will ha we'll have is a really fast clock, and you know they have to top deck the land to Tide Shaper my red source anyways, and. I just have a lot of game, I think. And I, just getting these shadows down is going to allow me to really put a lot of pressure on my opponent. I would even maybe have the option to just, like, thought seize them, bolt myself, and then I'm at um, six life, which makes these seven sevens, hit them down to seven, and then just either shadow hitting them the following turn puts them dead. Okay, I'm very happy... But they're not trying to kick the Tide Shaper. So, they, I mean, their hand is now Master of the Pearl Trident, Tishana's Tide Binder, Harbinger of the Seas, Mystery Card. They may pop the Relic if they didn't draw a land. Hard to imagine that they love the attack that grows my shadows here. Seems that they do not love it. Okay, that's a nice pickup. 
So let's play into Thoughtseize, the Harbinger of the Seas, and then Bowmaster kill Tide Shaper in response to them activating Aether Vial. They may pop the Relic in response to the Bowmaster now. Dismember, Chalice of the Void, Harbinger of the Seas, Tishana's Type Binder. Okay, so I'm attacking for 12 here. My opponent will almost definitely take it. And if they violate Harbinger of the Seas, I send with everything. They're at... They're at 8. And they wouldn't be able to chump a shadow. I guess they could chump and block one of these. Yeah, I'll just take the Harbinger. If they chalice on one next turn, it's like still pretty fine for us. Death Shadow still got it, huh? Merfolk still doesn't got it. Is maybe another, you know, fishbowl half empty way to look at this. Get to live the dream, put it at nine, bolt, bolt, copy bolt, kitsa. Mm, sounds nice. Yeah, probably want to play these two cards this turn. But it says GG, I suppose. GG, I suppose. Demon Archon with the 17 months. Thank you. Welcome back. Red Shadow without Team of Battle Rage. Disappointing. You're disappointed I'm building my decks correctly? You have Phoenix. Phoenix is the new Team of Battle Rage. You have Inti. Come on. I guess I should have floated mana. Small fan, big out. I mean, the whole, the small thing, the small fan thing is just a meme. It's like, if someone says small fan or medium fan, they're just in the chat too much. <laughs> it's like, it's like, it, it's almost an ancient meme at this point. <laughs> but the, the people who are in the chat the most, they say small fan or medium fan. <laughs> uh, I don't think I don't think anyone who says small fan or medium fan isn't just in the chat a lot. All right, gonna keep this basic mountain a little awkward though. Did you still work on primal prayers or abandon the archetype? Um. I'm open to still working on it. You know, it's... I think that we got pretty close to, like, maximizing the idea, maximizing the shell. And there's not, like, that much more we can do until the Nadu ban happens. Because, like, that's really when Primal Prayers has the, the more potential to emerge from its shell uh, post-Nadu ban. Because there'll be, like... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, the, they're kind of the room for a creature-based combo to emerge. Yeah, trying to make shadows fly, at least. What if we'll get to cast one of these this game? Is Murktide the best thing you've been doing with Frog at the moment? I mean, I think Esper Gorios is the best Frog deck. Yeah, I think the grenade deck is a really good budget deck. Probably not a good tournament deck, but if you want like a hundred dollar F and M deck, it's probably your uh, best bet. Are they holding priority with this preordain? Seems like they're holding priority. I guess they're, I guess they're just resolving it right now, actually. But play with Rotten Mouth Viper at all? No, that card does look really sick. Um, I wouldn't. I don't think I would really have built that 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 deck with that card very differently from how Doomake built it, so... So, I don't know. So, let's go ahead and, I think, just play this second Bowmaster on my turn, get more damage, punish more Preordains, which they might have, and then play another Goyf post-combat. There's also kind of, if they have push, they'll probably push right now, and then my Goyf is maybe safe. Okay. Um...
Let's put that on the bottom. Kind of close. Pintet Primition, Pintet Prism, and Crab Abomination. I mean, that is pretty cool. Could be something there. So if I bolt, I do get to grow my goif. So put them down to 14, then eight. Hopefully they have a frog. I could also escape this nether goif. So if I escape the nether goif, um, I'm basically shrinking them down to O1s with the ability to get this one bigger. Seems probably not where we want to be. Also might want to pinnacle monk back my lightning bolts. Could happen. You know, heat better against Murktide in the matchup, push better against frog. There's the frog. I can't collect the evidence. I could put my opponent to three with a pinnacle monk for bolts in my hand available. Seems with bolts in my deck. Seems like probably what we should do. We can escape one of these next turn if we don't draw anything. Second frog is surprising. Okay, I do have to shock here. Should be okay. They can put me to one, I guess, if they discard the whole hand and jump. Although I have the, the Phoenix to jump block, potentially. Don't forget the frog or the Murktide. Good point. Or the the uh, Phoenix block probably keeps me alive, though. Shout out MDFCs. Maybe we should be playing one more. We have three right now. Two Fell the Myers and one Pinnacle Monk. We know about a counterspell, don't we? Okay, I did forget about that. But also, with them having three mana, it's going to be kind of tough for them to maneuver around the bolt, of course. Interesting attack. They discard Counterspell. They discard Counterspell. So not as many Counterspells in their hand as they had a moment ago. Now they jump the frog, growing the Murktide to 7-7. Seven, seven. Can they get rid of my Phoenix somehow? All right. So more Fatal Pushes against the frogs, probably. We can also bring a Nile Spell Bomb to slow down uh, Murktide. I mean, th these bolts are pretty bad against them. Yeah, bolts are just kind of awful, I guess. Can kill Bowmaster. We have Bowmaster for Bowmaster. Don't care about Bowmaster that much. Can try to play around it with the Channelers. Um, yeah, let's let's do this. I I guess I guess maybe I could trim third NT for third Spell Bomb on the draw. And he's kind of worse on the draw. Murktide's kind of better on the draw. Three spell is probably too many. I'm just going to play three NT. We have some Felda Profanes that sometimes can kill a Murktide. Detectus Phoenix can chump a Murktide. Okay, we'll keep this. Maybe needs a little help. Not going to mulligan. All right, I'll, I'll go Channeler Bobble. I mean, I know this is worse against Bowmasters, but... These, uh, these phoenixes need to find some evidence here. Now I am going to crack this bobble on my turn. Or try to at least. This way they can't get the trigger off the, the bowmasters, but I kind of expect them to fetch first. 
They do keep a card on the top. Let's see what it is. Fatal push. Okay, I, I think I like them keeping push on the top since I'd much rather them kill the channeler than Bowmaster the channeler. Or you know, push the channeler instead of Bowmaster the channeler. There's a basic swamp. Can't always get what you want. My nether goif is pretty big at least. Good chance we're going to surveil with the mire here. I think we'll do that even if they play a frog this turn, probably. They do have the fatal push, but, you know, another wave is kind of kind of resilient. Good chance we're going to hard cast a phoenix next turn. Wouldn't hate drawing a land so we could maybe save Felda Profane for Murktide, but I don't think I would keep a land on top, probably. Thoughtseize is kind of interesting. I think I'm going to graveyard it in this spot with them not having counterspell mana available, them not having Murktide mana. Second like basic swamp is a little sus, I guess. So imagine they're going to push the nether goif now. Take two. I'm gonna I'm gonna play and crack the bobble on their upkeep and then try to push the bowmaster in response to the bobble trigger on my turn. This way I'm gonna get the card for my next turn without triggering the uh, um the bowmaster. Unless they play second bowmaster here, then it's a little bit riskier. I do have two pushes though. Petty theft, okay. Pretty good against the Phoenix. Kind of shocked that <laughs> it took them this long to push there. So we know no cards in their hand anymore. We'll know whatever they're drawing now, and they have the borrower too. Capture spell. Well, have you been sandbagging a blue source? Yes, they have. Happy enough with this exchange, I think. You know, scam card? Cling to dust my thoughts use in response. Instead of the goif, I guess that's fine. Okay. Okay. Okay, well. Flying shadow time. Attack you for eight in the air. Not so bad. How you doing, PT? Yeah, Shadow's pretty good when it was plus two flying haste, I tell you what. <laughs> the new teamer battle rage. Nile spell bomb. So goodbye, Nether Goyf. Goodbye. Evidence to collect. Do you think Chromanticor is playable in this deck? Of course, yeah. Let's get a uh, soul. Everybody's favorite card. <laughs> the card that goes with Kermanticor, the Delve card. Is it? I don't think it's actually soul something. So they probably don't have a Drown anymore. This is that another Petty Theft? Soul Flare. It is soul something. Okay. Wow. Okay, so if we... Oh, the opponent, you are now... Chumping with your psychic frog. I guess was was that the plan all along? Doesn't seem too risky to cycle this. Should I maybe bowmaster this turn instead of casting the second phoenix? Seems fine. Might get to bestow now. Anything replace Street Wraith? Street Wraith is, like, kind of the most important card. Like, Phoenix isn't good without Street Wraith. Shadow isn't good without Street Wraith. Inti isn't good without Street Wraith. And having, having like, 12 of your spells just be like, oh, I'm playable because <laughs> you cut the Wraiths is just kind of a non-starter, unfortunately. I'm going to try to Vine in this style deck. Uh, not in this style deck. I think this is a pretty... Wait, why are they putting a counter on the frog? 
What am I missing? So they're going to try to cling to dust next turn? Doesn't seem like a winning line. Oh, they're going to grow. They're trying to grow a Murktide, maybe? Or, like, be able to cast a Murktide? I don't know. Also, shouldn't they have chumped with Borrower this turn? Or was that not a, a, available? Yeah, Vin Vingevine would be a pretty pretty different build. It would basically... You could put Vingevine in the Hollow 1 deck that we played earlier last week. Um, but it didn't even seem like that card was optimal. Or sorry, it didn't, it didn't seem like Vingevine would have been optimal. It seems like you should probably just play... Uh, like the Nether Goyfs and the... The one mana discard card. And like like with, with Vingevine, you kinda of need to play Blazing Root Walla too, which is you know, not really room for him. Alright, two oh four oh. Let's go. I know uh, I know Yindrick like plays a click sometimes. I would think that that card probably is a little weak. Any chance to revisit Storm anytime soon? We did last week to test Escape to the Wilds, and it was uh, not very good. Points on a mold of five. Is there a chance the commander can see other deck lists? Uh, I think Dex sends you to the Moxfield link when Moxfield is the wonderful sponsor of the channel where we host all of our deck lists. So next turn, we get to discard the Phoenix to the Inti, which makes my Goyf a 4-5 after you count the counter. That's why they call it a counter after all. No Thought on Seer, no Kozlex commands. Kind of a lot to dodge. Maybe I could try to Bowmaster to play around Kozlex command a bit better here. I think as they multi five, so like I think trying to dodge is okay. Failed our dodge check. Should have won the die roll. Got a lot of break the ices in the sideboard today. Four break the ice, two charm mom. Okay, looking for Street Wraith. <laughs> Another NT would be good. All right, so we'll see how we like our top card, I guess. Not so much. Kind of surprised they're blocking here. Uh, the plan against the block, I think, is just to surveil and try to grow the Goyf. The other option is to Bowmaster to kill the own Bowmaster, or Bowmaster kill this. Failed to grow the Goyf. Let's go to game two. <laughs> Fair enough. Maybe they have Kozlex command up too. I didn't think they would block. They're kind of weak to like, I guess Bolt doesn't get them that much. It was a bad attack. Okay, Break the Ice is in. Charmall's in. I think we just cut all the one mana removal spells. I had an interesting breakthrough with Primal Prayers and FNM. I'd love your evaluation of this combo. Delny, Raptor, Drake. Net two energy. Net two energy if you elect to not cast off Raptor. Dig for stop. Loof Flage on the stack to win. Um, Delny Raptor Drake. So I'm supposed to fetch shock turn one, or I guess I'll, I'll just I'll bolt I'll bolt this in, so maybe I could save this to surveil. But I want to be able to play shadow next turn potentially. Lab lab, besage you, devourer, Kozlex command, micro spawn. Interesting that they're on brood scale. Um, it seems like their hand is going to be a lot worse if I just take this devourer. No, I'm gonna take the command. The command's just too good. We actually have we actually won a match because we cast Pinnacle Monk against Shadow, picking up a bolt. Was answering why Bar was good legacy trash in modern makes sense. I mean that that is an interesting loop. Uh Delny Raptor Drake. I, I I think it's cool. I, I don't love that you have to be four colors, but it does seem like it does seem like a an a, a good win. Okay, so I drew the Pinnacle Monk, which is maybe going to let me surveil off the off the Marsh Flats here. 
I, it's cool that you can use Flage as a win con, picking it up with Raptor. That wasn't in their hand, was it? Dude, they topped a Grove of the Burn Willows to kill my Shadow. That is a beating. <laughs> that is a beating. It's been a while since I've seen that happen. Certainly hate to draw my land here. Uh, Fortune does typically favor the bolt, however. Another Ugin's Lab. We probably can get our... We're going to get our NT Devoured next turn, uh, assuming they don't have anything. Oh, and they have their infinite combo. So, two and one. Two and one. Sure. It would kind of depend on, like, do I... If you if you have Channeler in your deck, it's, like, a lot closer to want to play... To want to play Bolt. Oh, sorry. Heat. Didn't I have like three blockers? No, I only had one blocker. Right? I I, so I went bowmaster, kill my own bowmaster, bestow onto the NT, tapped NT to attack. Have I brewed with Port of Calamity yet? Came up with interesting brew using MDFC lands. I have like a Simic build that um my I my sideboard isn't like really there. Or like I have no don't even have any idea what state it's in. But I mean I think this looks pretty solid. Yeah, my sideboard is in quite a state. But I, I, I like I've been kind of like happy with this main deck and um have not built a sideboard yet. But I, I got the main deck into a spot where I'm looking. I, I think I do think you wanna I wanna be I just wanted to play more ramp than the last time we played it, so we're playing sprawl and talisman. Um Nothing too crazy. Need to build a sideboard. But I yeah, more MDFC la lancers is a cool idea for sure. So if I go Thoughtseize, Blood Crypt, that's minus four life, so I can't go Thoughtseize Shadow. My opponent's playing Lotus Field in their deck. Um So I think I'm gonna go Thoughtseize Nethergoyf this turn, and we can we can go Shadow plus Bowmaster next turn. Should we take Wish? Because we have Bowmasters for the ring. Because we're not doing that good against Wish for Breach, but they are a little ways away from like actually doing that. I think I'm going to take the Wish. It seems very close to me. This could definitely be the wrong choice. We're doing a 64 Vintage Cube this week. I didn't get any uh, tokens last week. I was pretty tired after the, um, after the Mox tournament. Maybe could have played better in some of my cube drafts. So I was kind of like getting a little goofy with some of them. So I didn't, so so none this week, but there are going to be more feeder events this weekend. So we're gonna give some tries still. So looks like we're gonna go twiddle into ring here, which is the plan, and then the bowmasters has a really good chance of just killing them. How important would I say Sign of Draco is in the Mono Green Leyland Devotion deck versus having more cards to improve the combo consistency? Uh, Scion is very, very important. So, like, you're not just, like, immediately dead to Boros. Like, having a really good combo against Boros is really important. And um, I would say that Scion is also very important. Should I? I think I should main phase Bowmasters. It's one less damage, but it stops them from twiddling in response to me casting the Bowmasters. 
Um, and then it's also like Sign of Draco is a four power creature for Fnatic of Ronus, so your Fnatic of Ronuses are much worse without Sign of Draco in your deck. Um, I've been thinking about playing Bristly Bill in Devotion, where it's also a two mana, four power creature for Fnatic, and it's also like a mana sink for Fnatic and a mana sink for Nykthos, which is kind of cool. Uh, but I, I don't think the combo consistency is that important because, like, a lot of times in that deck, you're just like getting Leyline Scion in play, or you're like casting World Breaker to like stabilize for a turn and then popping off the following turn. Um, I do, I do like that deck. I would like to play it again. Hey, Todd, should I have targeted myself with Bowmasters? Um, yeah, I guess so. I should have targeted myself. Maybe minus one point for next turn. How is Bristly Bill a three-dollar card? Well, it goes to Nadu. Bristly Bill is also a good card. Probably a popular commander. I would actually love to build a bristly built commander deck. I should I should build more commander decks. I've got a Magda one. I need needs some updating. I haven't updated it in like at least a year. Yeah, we should have them pretty dead next turn if somehow they fizzle. See if they can combo through the bowmaster. Magda C D H or Regular EDH? Uh I don't I don't know. Uh <laughs> so like I I have a lot of goofy dragons in there and I don't have any infinite combos. And I, I am mostly just trying to like put like what my goal is to put whatever the funnest dragon into play is. And I, I didn't build it like intentionally as powerful as possible, but I do have ancient two mana crypts, mana vault, uh, soul ring. Like I have, I have like a lot of the good grip monolith. I have a lot of good of the good fast mana in the deck. Um, but to some extent, I feel like you just like have to play like the fast mana If you're playing mono red, it's like, you just need the, need the ramp but um i don't know i know i i think some players would consider it cedh and i think i think that the c like i think cedh players probably wouldn't and uh, uh, so i don't know it's somewhere in between so maybe i i don't know i don't i don't know how to build a commander i don't know what <laughs> you know i just i just put it together what i thought would be fun yeah i, I have dragon storm in the deck Sounds like an eight. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't know how to. I don't know how to give the number. I know the meme is. It's like a seven. It's like a seven. Yeah, I've no. I don't have. I intentionally did not play Clock of Omens because I didn't want to just like always have that combo. Oh, <laughs> six to nine power scale. Yeah, because I, I. I'm sure like some casual players think you have all the like the expensive cards. It's uh. It's CDH. Do they find a twiddle? They, there's a twiddle here. This has to untap their lotus field though. Otherwise they're they're toast. But they untap the ring? I guess I guess they have their land drop to play, so I'm I'm wrong. They have their land drop to play. I can double bowmasters the next turn. For your dame. Cool down max with the 39 months, thank you. Okay, so we shock in Pinnacle Monk. Six plus three is nine. Let me ping them twice. Dude, I think the one point of damage I missed. Oh, sorry, I, I wasn't counting. I wasn't counting me growing the orc army. Okay, so I think they're dead to the ring trigger, but I think they might be dead right now if I hadn't missed that one point of damage. So this is twelve, and I'm attacking for. I said they had thirteen. And so I'm attacking for eleven. So yeah, I guess it was the same. Ping ourselves. <laughs> okay, I mean, it's the same damage. But our life total's higher this way. Yeah, so they would be at one here. With two Bowmasters in play and our lethal ring trigger. I mean, they have, so they so one thing is they have to consign this ring trigger. That's the only, like, that's like step one. Um, Cycling into two Bowmasters is probably not a good way to live here. Okay, I opponent is trying to give me carpal tunnel, the rare carpal tunnel strategy. Carpal's gambit. Enacted by Kai Buddha at Pro Tour 98 in in the uh Mall of America. Can they win instant speed? They shouldn't be able to usually. I don't know. I don't know. This is, I think, just the Carpal Tunnels Gambit. Making me stack all these Bowmaster triggers. Yeah, I'll, I'll save targets at the next one. 
The opponent is uh trying to trying to figure it out. What is the carpal gambit? The carpal gambit is when you make your opponent click so much that their finger falls off from carpal tunnel syndrome. Oftentimes frowned upon in <laughs> communities. Yeah, I guess board upon the win, just keep these bowmaster triggers on the stack, baby. Clyde, the 31 months, cube. I, I do love how much cube demand there's been for today. Uh, I think I, I, I definitely am excited to stream the feeder leagues. The, like the non feeder leagues, it's like there's no stakes and uh, I'm a little less juiced up. Is there, yeah, wrist, wrist braces are, they were one times banned, one time banned for outside assistance, but no longer. Okay, so now they've, they've bounced a bowmaster so they can let this trigger resolve. I will be I will be so okay. I was about I, I will be so impressed if our opponent could win that game from that spot. That would have been so cool. Okay, so Solus Jailer turns off Underworld Breach. It doesn't turn off Wish. Probably better to play spell bombs. They're bumping up sub prices again to eight dollars. No, they're not. Really? I hope that's fake. I had a good amount of subs fall off with the <laughs> increase to six dollars. For mobile? Oh, yeah. Do not subscribe on mobile. I, I, I think, I don't think there's a way for you to not lose an extra dollar that, to Apple or to Google Play. I Just wait till you come to PC or don't subscribe at all. I, I don't know. It's like, please don't, don't give the Play Store, don't give Apple that extra dollar. You need that dollar. Please subscribe on PC, but like, <laughs> I, honestly, if it's the difference between subscribing on mobile and subscribing <laughs> and if you don't have a computer <laughs> keep your dollar you can subscribe oh, okay okay never mind Des use the desktop version <laughs> something please you gotta figure this out Cobb with the nine months thank you so much appreciate you PC is cheaper. Yes. Apple and Google Play. I think Apple charges more, but I'm not actually sure. But they they, they both charge extra. It's pretty messed up. How can this deck beat Burn? Well, the Burn versus Shadow matchup is always like pretty interesting because if you can get a fast Shadow down, then their Burn spells can be a bit awkward. Um, and so like that dynamic is always pretty fun. That being said, I, I, I think usually usually a good shadow player can beat a poor burn player because of that. But the burn player just knows to like hold their burn spells and not and like not until like you're under 13 and try to like try to maneuver around shadow. A lot of times the it's not too tough for the burn player to win if the burn player is playing really tight. So I probably want to NT next turn because I have double street wraith. It's also more mana efficient. Yeah, there's also not a lot of burn at the moment. What the fuck? Where is this info two years ago? It's, I'm sorry. I should every time, every time someone subscribes, I'll say. I hope that wasn't on mobile. Wraith into Phoenix. Wraith into Phoenix. I guess I I want to hold the wraith so I can use my NT cards on a later turn. I couldn't cast a Phoenix here with no mana. Do you think Vanishing Burst or Anguish of Making are good? Um. There have been times where Vanishing Verse has been good in Modern. I haven't thought about the card much lately. It probably is pretty good right now. There's not a lot of multicolor permanents. Anguish of Making sucks. There is the four mana exile permanent card. Okay, so now we can sh haste a shadow here, which is such a big deal. But there is that, that one four mana card. There's a Thoughtseize too. Jeez. It's from MH3. It's Exile Target Nonland Permanent. Ooh, and a Bowmasters. Intrigue Guest with the two months. Thank you so much. Then there's an Arid Mesa. Okay, give me give me a second here. Hold on. Someone, someone came over. Couldn't really hear. Um, okay, so we can go get down to six life. So my sh my shadow will be a seven seven. Then nine nine after thought sees plus four 
plus three. So nine plus four is 13, plus three is 16. So it looks like we're not gonna quite have lethal. So why don't we just thought these first? Take the Underworld Breach. Uh, Deserted Temple untaps Lotus Field, so it, it kind of like taps for two if you have Lotus Field in play. And what's really cool about it too is that you can you can play Deserted Temple as your second land, and then you can play your Lotus Field and still use the Deserted Temple to untap that Lotus Field on turn three and then sack it. We are popping off this game. So it's okay if they can sign this. Actually would prefer for them to consign this. Or sorry, sink it to the stupor. I don't know, don't know why I thought consign. But next turn, we've got a lethal hasty shadow. My opponent might be feeling kind of comfy wumpy at uh, 16 life here, but we are comboing off. NT was draw for you. NT and Street Wraith goes really crazy. So their hand is consign, uh, Telerio West, Vizier of Tumbling Sands, mystery card. They decide, they decide to not consign the Lotus Field trigger. I might have cycled first. I'm not really sure what they can T-West for here that matters so much. You kind of just need to dodge a ring as the one mystery card. What was the red deck you were playing earlier? I was playing Flare of Duplication and like a Goblin Grenade, 8 Wax style shell. It's like, okay, I think it's a pretty good budget deck, but you know, not a great deck overall. Would I recommend this deck for an RCQ this weekend or probably wait for the bannings? I mean, I think it would be an okay deck for an RCQ this weekend, but... It wouldn't be. It would. I. I. Don't, I would play like Woodlands combo if I was going. I think what my opponent is doing right now is uh, trying to see like what they can cons what they can T West for. Oh, they drew Underworld Breach as the mystery card. Or wish. Yeah, Van Diesel Ultimas. They, they they did draw Breach. All right, let's deck tech while my opponent tries to combo off here. Oh, cool. So I was thinking about. Playing Emperor of Bones in like um I guess kind of a different shelf from this, but like Emperor of Bones in a deck that's like like Esper Scam recently, and then like you can like ephemerate your Emperor, reuse it, but like just kind of move away from like the real reanimate synergies. Kind of different from this shell. Um I I hate this card. The only reason you should play Phyrexian Flesh Gorger in your deck, I think, is if you are lucky enough to have um if you're lucky enough to have, uh, or you're you playing Ugin's Labyrinth in your deck, it's in principle there, but this card's pretty unplayable, I think. It is cool with the Emperor, but I think it's just kind of bad overall. Like, I would just play, you know, Archon of Cruelty <laughs> in the slot, and like two more Emperor of Bones, maybe, if you want to go that direction, or you can just not go that direction if you don't want to. Um, so it's like a lot of in like okay if you have if you have NT and Detectives Phoenix in your deck you need to play Street Wraiths I think you need to have four Street Wraiths. I just thought sees this Underworld Breach too by the way so unlucky so unfair. It's three mana value too much. Yeah, I mean this this card is just bad. It's 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 not really that deep. This card just sucks. Um, I would really you need to have four Street Wraiths in your deck if you're gonna play four Phoenix four NT. You must have them, I think. And I and although I I guess you have these Olafonts and the trolls. It's just Wraith is so good with these cards. It's these cards, you know. Like Wraith, Wraith is better with these cards than Olafont and Troll, but these cards are better with Emperor, but you also only have two Emperors. So we do get a, a play spell bomb and bowmaster here, which is something. <sighs> Could be bad to shock and like lose to a like wish for a mini grape shot, but I think I'll shock. Doesn't seem like we need to ping ourselves this time. Feels bad. Like we really need to fade that 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 one draw. And, is what it is. 
Um, but yeah, I think, I think overall, cool list. And I, I have been wanting to play Emperor of Bones kind of this way, so it's cool to see this. I like it with the cool claw, too. I would, I, I would want to play four Emperor of Bones, zero Flesh Gorgers, and then um, figure out the Street Wraiths, probably. Super interested in that blue green El Jersey deck if a certain card leaves the format and the sideboard becomes easier to narrow down. Yeah, maybe we'll save it for post post Monday. Well, I play it tomorrow too, because you know there's there's only so much <laughs> only so much we have available. I'm trying to keep things interesting. A deck with bones, frog, and soul cauldron. Uh maybe. It it would be cool to like Turn a uh, emperor into a into a frog and exile your own stuff. You can play uh, Gristlebrand in that shell too, and then like that's an activated ability. Could be good. I was I was kind of looking at trying to be like uh, when when like working on that shell. I was kind of looking at trying to play um, like Emperor Bones is like this value card that's like scamming your solitudes and scamming your griefs and stuff. And I was even thinking, I also want to play Emperor of Bones Idyllic Grange. And that seems kind of tough to do, but just like the ability to just turn your fetch land into a bones trigger seems kind of cool. But maybe I, I, I didn't really get that far on the idea because it seems like a little sticky. I don't know if that's the right word. Yeah, probably dead. Feels pretty bad. Need to fade a top deck. Have you considered doing a triad stream once a week where you play your perceived best deck and go for as many trophies as possible? Nah. It's like, I don't know. It's not just not that interesting, I guess. Like, like we, we do we do have a triad stream once a week, and that's the, those are the tournaments we play. Like we're playing a challenge on Friday, and we play we play challenge every Friday. And some Saturdays too. That that is that is our try hard day. But like, I if I'm gonna try hard on a day, I'd rather play a tournament than play uh, than play leagues. All right, game three on the play. Our draw was so good that game. I feel so bad that we lost, but we get to be on the play for game three. Mulligan this. Keep this one. Probably going to go Goyf into Thoughtsy's Goyf. So I want to crack my fetch this turn to grow the Nether Goyf and Goyfs and... Hmm. There's a very good chance I want to Thoughtsy's that Underworld Breach. But I think I'll just thought these now. Okay. So they have another one. Their hand is pretty dang good. I think we take the consider. Because their hand does need a little help. The breach draw is actually not so good for them. Street Wraith is very good here. It grows the go, grows another Goyf, triggers the Inties. We technically have a turn for kill here. Hold on one second. Got to let Athena in. Okay. Um, let's play the Inti before we play, before we cycle the Street Wraith. Blood Crypt. Nile Spell Bomb. That's uh honestly pretty big. So this is um eight down to nine, and then we just have lethal next turn, so seems like I could discard this channeler. Imagine if they top decked echoing truth here. But let's let's save it. Might we'll just discard it next turn. And then the fact that we know that they have two breaches, this Nile spell bomb was great hit. Thank you, NT, for just being you. So 
So they have Lotus Field and two Viziers and the this t deserted temple. Oh, I think they're blundering. Yeah, they they should have used the deserted temple to untap this Lotus Field. Now they're just minus one mana. Not the biggest deal ever, but uh, my, a mana's a mana. Any blunderers in the chat? I am a blunderer. Yes, I am a blunderer. I blunder round, around, 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 around. They do have the sink into the stupor, right? That they can just bounce one of my creatures to. Hey, Tashi, welcome. Two on the top, zero on the bottom. We know about Underworld Breach, Underworld Breach, and the sink, and that's it. Probably could just keep that in my head instead of doing this. I'm doing well, CR3, how are you? Third Vizier. Probably not the ring. I feel like that one have taken so long to cast. Okay. Sure. Got to do this knowing two of their five cards are Underworld Breach. Good play for sure. All right, so hand is breach, breach, sink into the super mystery card. Seems like that mystery card is really good. I'm not sure. I mean, it must be a wish, right? So they can wish for the mill five card. I think they have exactly enough to win this crazy. They even missed a mana this turn. Wait, they got Twiddle? That was... Okay, that's huge. What am I missing? Why did they get Twiddle? Why did they get Twiddle? Is their hand not sink, breach, breach right now? They can't do anything. How how am I how wrong am I? Did they play like the Is their hand not breach sink into a stupor right now? Cause I thought they were gonna get the one mana mill five and combo off. I don't know, I don't know. Did they just grab the wrong one mana instant? It seems like it seems like we don't know something about their hand. But I don't know how, how we messed it up. I don't know how we have the wrong info here. Yeah, okay. I think I just messed up. No scare. Sorry, Athena. I'm so sorry. Go back to sleep. It's okay. She's so she was so upset with me for making that sound. I'm gonna go give her a pet. Very sensitive. Like I was robbed of an amazing ending. I feel like that was an amazing ending. Yeah, either misclick, no tomb scour, blunder, I don't know. Didn't seem like they had the win. When are we coming back to Green Eldrazi? Probably after the uh, the ban on Monday. I think we're good in like Ancient Stirrings. So the, the problem with Ancient Stirrings uh, in Eldrazi is it's bad with uh, Trinisphere and it's bad with Chalice, but maybe that's okay. Those are those are my issues with it before. Yeah, but I kind of just want to come back to the archetype with like a fresh perspective once the bird is gone. If for some reason the ring is banned, what would you put in the Shifting Woodlands and Eldrazi decks? Well, I mean, we the green Eldrazi deck we played uh, without the ring doesn't change. Like, there, there's still some Eldrazi builds I have that don't play the ring. And um, in the Woodlands deck, it's like, I think I would play a main deck Haywire Might, the fourth Traverse, and uh, the fourth Cash Grab. I'm not, not sure I would main deck the Haywire Might, but I would try it probably. I mean, like a Bobble maybe... But uh, Haywire might being two types of Delirium and like main deck answer to some stuff is kind of cool. It's just kind of been good in general to have. You can also play second Gristlebrand, maybe. Probably not that necessary. Dude, our hand is good against Inquisition. Pretty good at least. Does the energy deck need some nerf or is bird enough? I don't I don't think nerfing the energy deck makes much sense. I have been like 
I think I think if I if the energy deck is the best deck in modern or the most popular deck in modern, like that that I would kind of like that. It seems like a really easy deck to exploit, a really easy deck to farm. Like in in like the last challenge we played, we played Woodlands and like we beat them five times in a row. We did lose we did lose to Marnie one time, but like like playing decks like Woodlands, decks like Gorios, um, you can farm them kind of easy. Just guy's pretty good against them too. Tron has a lot of game against them. It's just kind of like a good deck to be like the best deck, if that makes sense. I was even like beating energy when I was playing Hollow One. Like like the Hollow One deck is actually like weirdly good at racing it too, which is kind of exciting. Okay, so that's Delirium. Let's see what we draw here. I'm kind of surprised they took the Phoenix. Happy enough though. So could graveyard this for more evidence to collect. But it seems like just keeping it and having Bolt plus Bowmasters next turn is probably a bit better. Like just having this in the yard to grow the Nethergoyf is probably fine. Yeah, Le Leyline Scion is also pretty good against Bowmaster or against against energy, so I don't know. I, I would I would certainly not recommend banning Flage, Johnny, Amtraptor, Guide of Souls, um, uh, Ocelot Pride. I would not I would not recommend banning an energy card. Is Rumble good enough in Breach if Ring gets banned? In Breach if Ring gets banned. In the Green Red through the Breach deck? I don't I don't know. I think you probably just have to rethink how you're building that one. If you're talking about Underworld Breach combo, you already don't play that card, but you're so you're probably not talking about that card, right? Could just skip the Nether Goyf. I think I I'm gonna just try to resolve Bow Masters instead here. Lunar Conviction plus Bitter Blossom plus Guide of Souls. This, Bitter Blossom is just so bad. It's just so bad. I get it, though. The, the, the problem is, like, these decks are just so, so slow. It can't really afford to be this slow. A very cool idea, I think. 6-6 six, six, Merc Tide. Sorry, I didn't realize it was a deluge. Looked a little too fast. It would have been good to bolt and try to find a creature to... A creature to have on top to uh, haste with the Phoenix. I think I'll just get a tapped. Sorry, I guess the tapped also doesn't make sense. Do I have enough to escape Nethergoyf and detect this Phoenix? No, I'll probably have to exile the Phoenix to the Nethergoyf. So we'll take the charm, escape the nether goyf, um, exiling marsh flats, phoenix, maybe not phoenix. Okay, so land, and then we could do, we could do, a, we could just do creature, sorcery artifact, and then we still have the phoenix in the yard, and we still have bolt plus goyf for lethal. Yeah, I want to keep the fell in so I can bestow uh, collecting the fell. And then this keeps enchantment in the yard. This I think this has got to be, have has to have been the best way to do it. Okay, so their hand is Counterspell, Spell, Pierce, Mystery Card. That's the Mystery Card. So no top deck Archmage's Charm. Also, you should not ever put this card in your deck anymore, I think. Just Soul Warden's too low card quality. So they found a Murktide, which is pretty bad for me. Okay, so if I Bowmaster my opponent, I put them down to five. I Bolt them, I put them down to two. Then I escape Detectus Phoenix, getting rid of Fell the Profane Bowmaster. Um, I have a hasty, I have a hasty flyer. I guess it's not quite lethal because they get to block, right? But. I know my opponent's hand is counter spell, and I know my opponent's hand is spell pierce. So 
So right now they're dead if they don't top deck anything. Wait, this is lethal? Haste the Bowmaster. So if I haste this, my Nethergoyf shrinks to one power, doesn't it? Like I exile Fell and Bowmaster. Oh, sorry, the Nethergoyf is two power. I thought it would be one power. Okay, yes, that is lethal. Grab up the land. Maybe better to haste the token. Phoenix is so good. This card is really, really powerful. So up a game against Demir. We did beat this matchup earlier. Uh, Bolt is just kind of bad against them, so we ended up cutting them and brought in two spell bomb, two push. I felt pretty good about the sideboard plan. Gonna run it back. Phoenix is very, very good at these matchups. Phoenix is like moderate adjacent anger. Yeah, it's a good kind of good way to think about it. In a lot of ways, it's better than anger too. Better in multiples, more power toughness, more resiliency to removal. Doing Fairy Macabre with the sideboard. It's free discard for NT, card types, and graveyard hate. Um, yeah, maybe it could be better than Spellbomb. I think Spellbomb lines up better against Flage overall. Um, but yeah, you could you could maybe try out some Fairy Macabre. Fairy is like pretty good against uh, Gorius too. I like this version better than the Hollow One version. I think the Hollow One deck is very very good. This is our first league with this one, so it's just kind of too small a sample size to really tell. But I would I would probably recommend Hollow One still, but I would also recommend like a couple more leagues with this deck to figure it out. This deck was definitely much demanded for. People are screaming in the streets for Spike to play Phoenix Shadow. So we're trying to find a song. Gurmag Angler, was this ever a modern card? Was this ever a modern card? Oh wait, did I play Tasker? I might have played Tasker over Angler. <laughs> I think I think in my first ever GP I played, I had Tasker over Angler. But yeah, Ang Angler was like a pretty popular modern card for a while. There was like spots where you play Angler instead of Tasker. It was like, ooh, it, like both cards were like like pretty good. It was it was it was definitely pretty real. You would like shrink your opponent's Tarmogoyfs with them sometimes. You would like bolt their Tarmogoyf, play an Angler, shrink their Tarmogoyf. Um, it was awesome. It was so cool. Yeah, yeah Grixis Shadow played actually like four Angler stock at one point. But I remember my first GP, I played Caleb's D's list, who was on Tassiger instead. I, I believe that was my recollection of events there. All right, keeping this. So I think we're going to bobble... Let's bubble ourselves first. If I see like an NT, I might want to hold the Wraith. But I'm also going to bobble them in before I thought sees. Yeah, I, 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 like, knowing that I'm drawing the Blood Crypt, like if I cycle the Street Wraith now, it's not going to give me like info. Like I'm not going to like, ooh, now I know what I'm doing with my next turn. All right, so their top card is a subtlety. I want to I want to shock this in. So if I draw uh, Death Shadow, I can play Shadow and Nethergoyf next turn. Okay, so they have two Fatal Pushes and they have this Archmage's Charm. The Charm is not looking very castable at the moment, um, but it is it is like kind of just a blowout if they could steal a Shadow or Nethergoyf. So I think I should just probably take it. It's one of their best cards of the matchup. I don't have that many more discard spells in my deck. Am I going to go to all the Spotlight Series events? Probably probably not all of them. Uh, I will definitely... I am almost definitely going to go to the one in Atlanta in January. And then... Um, dip, uh, and I, I, would, I, I would like to go to the one in Netherlands, but I'm also trying to get married next year. And so money... Yeah, there's a good chance money is too tight to fly to the Netherlands for a GP. As much as I would love to. Um, yeah, maybe. Dude, our Phoenix is just going to be so, so bestowed. Just get married in Vegas. <laughs> but, but the friend of mine who I asked to officiate our wedding... I joked about us getting married in Vegas. He's like, is that what you want to do? <laughs> he, he was very down. Tell us about the tulip fields and she wants to get married in the Netherlands. I mean, we wouldn't have... 
our friends and family there, which might be the big problem. But only magic guests at her wedding who are just incidentally there. Like, you know, that's a good way to get Reed and, uh, <laughs> Reed and Gav to come to the wedding, too. Playing the long game. All right, so let's see if this Bowmaster resolves. If it resolves, I'm going to bestow the Phoenix. And if it doesn't, uh, I'll just surveil. Yeah, then chat can come. <laughs> It'll be perfect. Oh, the moderators are groomsmen, yeah. <laughs> Will I wear a tuxedo to my wedding? I don't know. I mean, I'll wear something, probably. I imagine I will be clothed. It's always been a big part of the vision. My opponent's hand is Fatal Push Subtlety right now. Right now I'm waiting on an uh, email back about a venue. My life total is kind of low. I think I should probably attack, though. I think they should push the Bowmaster here, too. Okay. I think they should have so that if they draw land, they can have subtlety up a bit easier. I guess it would be okay. Let's not block. They get a top deck preordain. Frog, also a reason to not block, I guess. Not a great top deck. So, creature, land, sorcery, artifacts. Keeping the wraith in the yard for evidence to collect. I think they'll push the goyf. Their hand is now just a subtlety. So, I can let this happen and kill the bowmaster, maybe. Blocking also seems pretty fine. I'm gonna let it hit. Uh, and, uh, kill this. Seems okay. Little T2 mystery cards in their hand now. There's the subtlety. So I am now pretty happy that I got rid of the Bowmaster. Let's see what our top card is. Another Detective's Phoenix. It's better than the average draw. I might need to like dig for one of my three Fatal Pushes or four Fatal Pushes. Or my Fel the Profane. I think I'm going to do that to have on their turn. Although maybe I should have... Maybe I should have cracked on... On their upkeep, so I could have revolt for push on subtlety, but I, I I'm like basically always pushing the frog instead, so probably doesn't matter so much. Um, I also don't know that they're gonna flash in the subtlety, but it see it seems like they should. So yeah, okay, it seems like the right play. So we got we also draw bowmaster as like a card that like makes their frog worse. Could maybe kill the subtlety. Eighteen lands in the deck, probably going to game three. So that's a flying frog. So I block the phoenix, I go to two. And they have to discard a card. Versus I block the subtlety. I block the subtlety and they're dead to a death shadow if they have nothing. Because I get to go shadow escape. I think I think that's probably, it's probably good. Oh, I can also kill the subtlety too. Yeah, that's got to be the correct line. Seems like they're thinking about discarding cards or not. It is card of Spell Snare. And they put me down to three. Kill the subtlety. Two cards in their hand. 
Another frog. So now they could block a flying death shadow. And now they have two lethal attackers. Although now they no longer have two lethal attackers. So, because they can't fly anymore. Maybe with some series of draws or something. Seems like they got a counter spell. <laughs> Not looking great. Got game three on the play. Yeah, so now... Well, okay, so now they used a card. So now this frog isn't lethal anymore. Close game. <laughs> No attacks. I don't know why they played that Delta. They should have saved that to discard. Now, I don't have Delirium for my channeler. Is there much reason to even play it out? Yeah, I mean, I could want to attack with it next turn if I drew a push. Or an Inti, maybe. Prince has misplayed so much. I don't know... I don't know what they did wrong besides play the Delta here. Maybe they're regretting discarding. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sure if there's anything that was like clearly egregious. And like this, like surveilling here is also like pretty nice, but I think I'd probably value the, the discard here. Cause like, cause I would be dead if they had just like held the card in hand. Long tank. They, I think kept the card on top. Unlikely to be good for me. It's nice that we're still in this game. It seemed like we would have lost a while ago after flooding a little bit. No attacks. I mean, draw step. I gotta cycle it. It's like, they, I'm just dead if they just kill, attack with the frogs next turn. So, okay. Now I am indeed just dead. Maybe I could try to bluff stuff. Let's just go to game three. Okay, I'm on the play for game three. Let's go. Let's get the 4-1. Why? Why am I dead? My opponent uh, has two lethal attackers in the air there. Could have bluffed that at a push, I guess, but... I think we could just go to game three. Psychic Frog is very, very good card. Somehow, I feel like this deck is close to running Obosh for IDK. Well, you have to play Bobble as like it's like mandatory in your Nether Goyf deck almost, and DRC is really good too. So that's kind of uncuttable. NT's kind of uncuttable. Bowmaster's kind of uncuttable. But we have played Obosh Shadow before, so always very cool. I think I played at the Hunter Burton one time. Not quite Luris. 2022 Mardu Obash Shadow. Play Gurmag Angler in this one. Oh boy. <laughs> hmm. What a deck. Okay, on the play. So if I draw a third Street Wraith, I can turn one Shadow. Although now I will save that Street Wraith for NT. Could Troll be a good fit here? I don't think you want to play Troll with Shadow. You want, like, Fetchlands that deal you damage, or MDFCs that deal you damage. Troll does, um... It's a lot of evidence to collect, so it's definitely... It's not a bad option, but those cards are also really slow. Like, I haven't, like, exactly had the experience of, like, really, really wanting to play those cards um, in decks like this. Alright, let's play NT this turn. Not going to discard anything. Could have been good to, I guess, upkeep cycle the Street Wraith because of Bowmasters, but I could also just untap Thoughtseize first. But what, what, what would have been good about that was would have been the ability to uh, not have the Thoughtseize Bowmasters necessarily. Fire Covenant would be nice in this deck. Okay, let's just go ahead and do it now for kind of the same reason. That card's not legal, right? 
Okay, it's a good one for next turn. Nice to have a land drop. So we can go Thoughtsy Shadow and then bestow the Phoenix onto the Shadow next turn. Pretty good turn. All they got is a frog. Okay. Should we be... I guess we need to be a little bit worried about my opponent killing me with the frog on the backswing, actually. So if I go Thoughtseize, Fetch Shock, I'm going to be at 4 life. My Shadow will be 11 power in the air after the Phoenix. My Nether Goyf will be 4 power. Dang, I'm just dead to frog. Can you not can you just not lose life here and go to one? No, my opponent can deal me um I guess one less with the thought seize. Sorry, hold on. Definitely taking this, I think. But they'll be able to disc sick they can they can deal they can make the seven power. I guess yeah. Was there a way to do sure. Gotta take the charm, I think. If they discarded hand, were you not dead? Can't we just block? We have to block because it has flying now. But it's not. It's not. You know. I mean, I would, I would just really want to throw a shadow. Uh, this on the shadow and present lethal, but I can't present lethal. I believe. It's really close. Okay, so let me just recount. So I can fetch shock. Go down to four. This is nine power. Eleven power in the air. Putting it onto six, but then they can just block my Nether Goyf or my NT, and basically go to uh, go to three. So I'm gonna go ahead and attack with my Nether Goyf. I'm gonna discard the Pinnacle Monk. Fatal Push would kind of solve every problem here. Second Detective's Phoenix is super juicy though. The shadow is still good to block, right? Yeah, I mean that that seems to be the plan. We're not we're not dead. Although we have now the option of we could we could play two phoenixes here, although that would make my nether goy really small. But we could play two phoenixes on the wraith. Seems like it's going to be better to just bestow onto a shadow. Cool game. Then I'm gonna get rid of two wraiths here instead of the thought seas because we want to have the extra type for the nether goyf. Goodbye, sweet bird. Too pure for this world. So my opponent is pretty likely to make a big Murktide regent this turn. They shocked. Nazi's bug alive and well. GG's. Oh, they shut. <laughs> oh, this also has haste. We just thought he's a charm. Bad beats, huh? What you gonna do? All that thinking. What was it for?